right, guys, we've got Lock Lock, a GM Terran, low GM, up against a pro gamer. The difference is, the pro gamer, we go to Hero Marine's vision, he can't see that much, right? If we go to Lock Lock's vision, Lock Lock sees the entire map. That's right, even the Urubus out here hanging out in the middle of the map, they can see Gabe's base. And this is huge because in TBT, it's all about positioning and you need to save a lot of scans. Lock Lock never needs to scan except to see invisible units and Lock Lock's tanks can even shoot. You can shoot up cliffs. So you can basically never have to scan. You're always gonna have a positional advantage and you can actually make it very difficult for your Marine. There's also one other thing, which is your units start with, or they have a total of 200% extra energy now it doesn't apply to buildings but it does apply to units so um essentially yeah it's gonna be kind of massive it's gonna be kind of massive ravens will spawn with 100 energy out of 400 um that's the main one what other energy units really i mean ghosts don't really matter in this matchup banshees will spawn with a bit more energy banshees do not regenerate energy while they are actually uh cloaked they only drain energy so there's no point. You could take you could take them to 10,000 energy. They would still eventually run out of energy. But it's just, uh, it's going to take a very long time. The Urubu's hanging out here. The Reaper doesn't choose to take it down just yet. Lock Lock's playing a pretty solid game, guys. Lock Lock's a pretty good player. But uh, Gabe's going to be so much tighter on some of the basics. It's going to be difficult. And, you know, Gabe kind of pokes out and he runs home because he's like, well, if I move out, their Reaper can just wait for me to leave the base. They can run in, run in kill the SCV, and then get away. So he's kind of forced into a very defensive stance here, building a reactor, building a Hellion. He's microing his way back and forth. He's so paranoid. Gabe is not very practiced versus map hackers. App hackers. At the very top ranks, like map hackers can't even get to you. The only people up there that cheat are lag hackers, basically people that just make you lag out. So you kind of just have to leave the game or you're constantly frozen. Uh, you can't play the game. So, because the thing about map hackers is StarCraft is such a skill-based game. Even when I play map hackers, I tend to usually beat them. Once I know that they're hacking, I know, okay, they, they know what I'm doing. I've just got to play really solid and well-rounded. And their macro is so bad and they can't handle multitasking. You know, you basically just do a lot of um, non-committal pressure. So you'll send like a medevac and you'll fly it there and you'll just move it around and not actually drop because they always overcommit to respond to everything. Now, Lock Lock is not actually a, mac a map hacker, right? We've just switched this on for this challenge. So he's basically, uh, he's, he's, you know, he's not going to be as practiced at cheesing people with it and catching people off guard. But look at that. He just runs the SCVs off the low ground before the Hellion Reaper even arrives. Dude, that is so, so useful. That's amazing. By the way, we all know that Gabe has never cheated um, because the reflection on his glasses would give that away if he ever had some software or anything else open. You can always just enhance on that image and you'll you'll be able to figure it out. <laughs> you'll be like, he's been... <laughs> and you're like, he turns and you're like, wait a second, what? What is that? Is that a Twitch stream open on his second monitor? Is he watching the stream? And then you see Amaranth get out of the hot tub and you're like, oh, it's a, no, it's that's tech that's technically not cheating. Unless he has a girlfriend, in which case, mate, then it could be argued. It's still not StarCraft cheating. Either way, that's it's fine. If it's motivation, you know? Starcraft players, a lot of them, I've talked to them. We've had player meetings and they've said, I've said union, we need a union. We need a union, we need to get treated better. And they, 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 they vetoed that at the player meeting. And I was like, guys, what do you want? I'm here to represent you. And they said, cheerleaders, we need cheerleaders. It's what's missing in Starcraft esports. I was like, I don't know if that's what's missing guys. They're like, fine, we'll just have to tune into hot tub streams and use that as our proxy. Cyclone doing a nice lock on that. Good defense by Lock Lock. I like the way Gabe's very carefully pressuring here, though, guys. Oh, he's doing a really good job. Lock Lock's building Ravens. Yes, the Raven spawns with 100 energy, guys, so he can just interference Matrix immediately. But Gabe actually unsieges before it hits and pulls back. Really good play by Gabe. Gabe's exerting really nice pressure, guys. He's macroing decently, so he's keeping it even. He's starting his third command center not too long after Lock Lock. Lock Lock's playing a good game, but I would have liked to see him use auto turrets, though. He's already got another auto turret available, and he's going to have two more. I really feel like if you just confidently spam auto turrets, you could take this out. I, I actually really want to play Gabe with this on myself now, guys. My ego is getting involved. I'm like, oh, this might be the only time I could take a map off Gabe if I had this on. <laughs> the thing is, I know I'd, I know I'd poop the bed. Watching, I feel like I know exactly what to do in every scenario. Actually clicking the buttons, I know I'd panic and just screw it up so badly right now if I was in Lock Lock's shoes. Bunker is going to get Siege down. The pressure Gabe is putting on is so damn good, man. Oh, no. The Marine and the Alien's going a bit far forward. Okay, the Ravens look like they have no energy, but remember, he has a lot. Oh, he, he loses a Raven. He almost loses two. 
Oh, he almost loses the second Raven as well. Good fight there for Gabe. And Locklock just having so much pressure on him playing against Gabe here. I, I do think Locklock should be able to fight and do okay, but he's going to have to repair that Raven. Cyclone does get taken out. Careful, Locklock. Put it back in your pants. Now, remember, Locklock sees everything, but he's got to just keep macroing, get these units up and get to that next step. Repairing the Raven, super huge right now. And uh, we'll see what happens. Drop going down that right side. Tank sieged in a good spot, though. He can technically drop just out of tank range, though. Oh, finesse. Oh, that one Marine goes just a little bit too close. Gets a, a few of those units picked off, but Gabe doing a great job. He's got an A-worker lead right now, guys. The Raven energy boost is meant to be pretty huge, but having lost one of the Ravens... and Oh, no, he's going to lose another one! No, these Ravens could stack up so much value. Guys, imagine if you had three Ravens, you can keep them alive all game. You have 1,200 energy at max energy. Do you think about that? Three Ravens could just recycle constant, absolutely constant interference. Like 10, I don't even know how many interference matrices there. 16, 17, something like that. Some crazy number of interference matrices. You could just spam them out. It would be absolutely insane. Medivacs also will have near infinite healing when they hit the field as well. So you won't need as many Medivacs. But behind right now is Locklock. If Locklock stays confident, they'll be fine. The problem is, if you're in this scenario, normally you feel like, oh, I'm losing, this is bad, I've got less stuff. But if you can see what they're doing, like, he's not, it's very hard for Gabe to actually punish you from here, especially once you get tanks everywhere and that sort of stuff. Now, if it doesn't charge faster, it doesn't matter unless they don't fight for a long time. Absolutely correct, which is why it's all about keeping your first three Ravens alive for a very long time which normally they max out on 200 energy. That that happens very regularly because there's normally a lull after the early game where the Ravens aren't being used. But because Gabe's keeping the aggression on, he's not letting him build that energy. Gabe is denying the energy advantage right now. Hellion comes in. The SCVs are going to drill him down. Gabe says, oh, well, you're not going to do it. I might as well micro a little bit. And takes a tank volley. Look at that. A tank gets killed there, guys. Very well done there by Lock Lock. Let's take out one of Gabe's tanks with the preemptive siege. Vision advantage is nothing to scoff at. 1-1 one, one upgrades are on the way. Stim as well. It's already done for Gabe. Gabe's building a fourth command center as well. Ooh, Gabe comes forward, but more Vikings out actually for Locklock -Lock than for him. Locklock -Lock doing actually a very good job in this game. He's down 20 supply though. Gabe's done a pretty good job of keeping him busy. But at this point, I think Locklock -Lock can start a fourth command center. Macro on up. And if you just play a tank Viking heavy style, especially like with the vision advantage, that's got to be so annoying for Gabe to deal with. Second factory, fourth command center, two more barracks. Oh, he's only on three barracks. That's not great. Lock Lock's building placement definitely leaving something to be desired there. Oh, I guess he's going to put that on the fact the barracks actually on the tech lab. Never mind. Armory's on the way at a pretty decent timing for him. Gabe is ahead. Two two starting up now as well, but it's not insurmountable by any means. It'd be cool if, if Lock Lock's instincts kicked in and he started scanning. It would. Remember, even though he was behind, he never needs to scan. Everything goes into mules. But because of that, his bases will mine out a little bit faster than he's used to. And he's going to actually have to expand at a slightly faster rate as well. Units lost are slightly ahead for Lock Lock so far. But floating a little bit of money needs to be careful as the barracks production is just getting up. And if Gabe just keeps the pressure on, you can tell that Lock Lock is kind of nervous Seeing that army moving around the map sometimes actually makes you more uncomfortable than you really should be in these scenarios. Reactors do go down. Factories waiting for that combat shields to finish in the next 20 seconds or 10 seconds, I should say. Second factory is on the way for Gabe right now as well. And Gabe is playing a pretty good game. Look at this though. The drop gets in and he knows it's a good drop because he doesn't even need to scan. Normally you give away when you're dropping because you scan. Oh, it's a great drop for Lock Lock. Lock Lock taking Gabe to Dicktown right now. Very good drop, but Gabe does get back with the rally, and Lock Lock did stay a little bit too long. Should have been able to get out of here if he was a bit more patient with it. Oh my god, he hasn't moved his army at the same time. Oh no, Lock Lock's struggling with the multitasking right now, guys. The tanks are all sieged. Go to unsiege all of them. Lock Lock leaving a bunch of tanks behind. Oh no. Okay, the Viking Raven could win the fight for Lock Lock. He has more Vikings right now. His tanks are going to get in an okay position, but he's already let Hero Marine get into that fantastic spot with two of those tanks. The Viking Raven Marine will end up fighting. It looks like an okay fight for Lock Lock. Not the end of the world. Matrix goes down. That one Raven does a Matrix. Still has two left in the chamber. But leaving Gabe's tank there is unfortunate. Eight Siege tanks still out for Lock Lock versus six of Gabe. 
2 2 and plus 1 vehicle weapon starting. Guys, Lock Lock's doing a good job of staying alive in this game. I do worry, guys. When this factory builds tanks. Oh, I think they can pop there and squeeze through that gap, actually. Anyways, tanks trying to move to the right side now. Gabe's really keeping the pressure on him. But look at that. Lock Lock doesn't even need to scan. He moves a tank forward, gets in range of two of Gabe's tanks. Gets like a bunch of shots off. But look at that. Nice drippy droppy from Gabe. Very well done. Oh, sexy move there. The Marines are trying to come over, but they're not stimming. Lock Lock's taking big damage. Gabe keeping him busy right now, keeping him stressed. Oh, Lock Lock needs to siege. He needs to siege those tanks. His Marines are traps. And he does pull forward there. Yeah, Lock Lock needs to start moving the tanks individually. The problem Lock Lock's having is they're moving their whole army as one. They should just leave their tanks in a line and just move their Marines and Vikings around and then occasionally grab a few tanks and move them. The problem is Lock Lock keeps trying to move the whole army because they're a bit afraid of Gabe. And that's probably not what you want to do here because Gabe's just trying to force you to kind of move around and be busy so you can't really use that vision advantage. It just shows how smart Gabe is here. Oh, just before the turret ring finishes. Dude, the turret ring finishes, but the drop is already there. Tank's doing all right. I think that tank really helped out. Another tank popped as well. But look at that. Siege is the top at the same time. Gabe's activity level is so high. Gabe was very worried about the map hacks in this, but I knew this would be a pretty decent challenge. Me and Lock, Lock both said, like, oh, there's not much chance he's taking it down. I think he made it pretty competitive. But Gabe just showed how to take away his opponent's advantages. And that's the difference between a top tier player who really understands StarCraft. He said, you have map hacks? Cool. I'm pressuring. Light, non-committal pressure in all places all the time. Trying to save the base here is Lock Lock, but the tanks retargeted off the planetary onto the Marines. And only now letting them retarget back on the planetary. Fantastic micro by Gabe. He's going to also stim through the left side. Those Marines are going to get hammered, but Lock Lock putting up a good fight. Not able to handle it. GG, well played.